Hello, I'm Tom. I'm Galen. And this is Black Phoenix Alchemy Labs Sunday Service. to our, okay, it's not a weekly video series, we just film it on Sundays whenever we get around to it, uh, because that's when there's no construction happening outside and it's quiet enough. This is the best time of the year! This is when the Halloween fragrances come out, which is something as someone who works for the lab and also someone who is a fan of the lab's products, where it's like, what, what are we going to do? Yeah. What is my, what is my fate? What am I going to be smelling like for the rest of foreseeable time? Uh, it's just been incredible, and we're completely thrashed and worn out, but it's worth it, so... Yes. Yes. Um, let's talk about the Mask of the Red Death. The Mask of the Red Death. It's very green at present. The Mask of the Green Death. I screamed when I read the Mask of the Red Death update. You heard me scream from the other room. I did. I was ignoring what was going on. And then you read it and you screamed. <laughs> and then I screamed. And I was, oh God. Yeah. Yeah. There, yeah. So I, yesterday I asked people which of the Red Death scents it was most important for you to have us smell just to describe them in case you're hovering, uh, trying to decide if you're going to buy something. And the answer that we mainly got from everyone is uh, basically all of them. So we have a lot of work to do. We mm -hmm. don't have all of them. We've got a bin of coffee. To, oh my god, we have the all keep the, of the palette coffee. fresh. So, first on the list, we have a certain nameless awe. That name is on the screen right now, so you know exactly what we're talking about. There it is. Uh, the description. I will not read the story excerpts. If you want <laughs> to hear me reading excerpts from the story you can go listen to the YouTube video that we made of the entire story presented as a beautiful musical audiobook featuring the label artwork by Tenebris Kate blown up like nice and full size on your screen. The link to which will be appearing right now. Uh, but in the meantime, I will share with you the descriptions that Elizabeth Burial has written. Bone white sandalwood, dry cognac, and chilled ambergris accord. Did you wear this one yet? No, I have not. I like this. I tr I am excited to try this one. I don't really do like wine and cognac scents very much. I've never found one yet that really works on me terribly well. But I'll wear a sandalwood literally anytime. Sandalwood is like a, it's not a really exciting place for me to hang out, but it's a very safe and comfortable place to hang out. And sometimes you need just a little reassurance. I don't really like sandalwood. Really? Does it bother you when I wear it? No. No. Oh god, that was convincing. Uh, uh I do like sandalwood enough. I don't like, like, pure sandalwood smell. This is a, really this is a very dry smell. Out. Okay. And I don't know how she chilled the ambergris, but, but it, it is chilled. definitely tamped down. There is a, <sighs> there is a chill. And it's not like yeah. a minty chill per se. Oh, there is a beer. Like, chill in my nostril. I can't tell if that might be a eucalyptus. I kind of wish that this came out earlier in the summer because if you any if there ever was a summer when you needed a cool sandalwood, this it's would good, have been it. Yeah, it's a good summer scent. Yes. So I hope that answers questions you may have about a certain <laughs> nameless awe. Uh, next we have a deadly terror that had seized upon all. Uh, we don't someone specifically requested this. We don't actually oh, have, yeah, we don't have that, one. that bottle. <laughs> Uh, Beth poured an insane amount of these scents right before our lunacy event so that there would be something for people to buy when they showed up, but we did not get all of them. So the next one is a gigantic clock of ebony, okay? And as you might expect, there is an ebony, this is an ebony wood-based scent with black pepper, narcissus blossom, and tuberose, 
clanging with dull, heavy apopanax and thick olibanum. I was really curious to try this one because I, uh, I like the other one. Okay. Yeah, I like wood scents in general. Um, that is I, yeah. not super peppery in the way that, like, the Blue Ghost, for example, that we tried was extremely peppery. Mm -hmm. But it is. Um, I'm getting more of the apopanax, olibanum, um, mm -hmm. and some of the floral notes. So if the wood is there, it's hanging out probably in the base. Put a little bit on my hand. I'm not afraid of clocks. I'm getting more like there's like a like a burst of the pepper. It's really beautiful. This isn't like my lady that I would probably take out on the town. But Smart. she is somebody's lady, for sure. Very dark, uh, inky. Um, we're very early in the video for me to run out of adjectives. It's like you can smell the curtains. It's funny because then I pick up the bottle, there are no curtains in this picture. No, no, but I mean in the story there's uh, the walls right. lined with black velvet curtains. Yes. That is the smell. That is the smell. Okay, this is a group of pale courtiers, okay? Which, uh, and it's another one, well, I don't know if someone specifically had called this one out, but we have it, so we're gonna smell it. A sycophant's polished stench, green musk fougere, lime, and rose tufted wig powder. I think that in both our cases, rose tufted wig powder was one of the phrases that caused us to scream just while reading the update. For me, I know it was. Yeah, rose tufted wig powder. Like, Whoa, what? Is she did what? Any more beautiful <laughs> phrase in the English language than rose tufted wig powder? I tried a little bit of it on yesterday, uh, and just like a little bit on my hand, and I was like, oh wow, this is really something special. Yeah, <laughs> I love a lime scent because mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of knuckle bones and the green wig spray that we did for DragCon, and I wear rose scents like almost every day in one form or another. Wig powder, though. <sighs> See, the thing is, people don't like it when scents go powdery. I like a powdery scent, some because people, I want to smell like right. some weird uh, French aristocrat. Spectre from the attic. Or a spectre from the attic. I really am enjoying the, the green musk and the lime are where it's at for me. Mm -hmm. um, I wish it was more of the rose. I wish it was a less powdery rose for me, but I have to admit that this is definitely one that I would wear in a locket or something. It's really nice. Ah. It's green I know. and pink. It's very green and pink. It is. I love a green and pink anything. That's why Black Swan is one of my favorite movies. A masked ball. Moving forward. Of the most unusual magnificence. Uh, this is a golden oud, red benzoin, and bitter almond. I put that right on my nose. I've never, I'll never be clean. Okay, I like, I really like this one. Do you wear almond generally? No. I'm getting a lot of almond right out of the bottle. And I'm getting a lot of almond, but it mixes with the benzoin in a way, to me it just smells like a weird kind of, what I, in my brain, imagine like a red pleather kind of. Ah, I just got it when you said it. That's crazy. That's what it smells like to me. I, I mean, there is like a leather smell in there. It's just kind what of like... What is it? Because it's not listed in the notes. Is it? I think it's the oud. It does smell like a very fancy party suddenly. Yeah. Like the kind of party that we are never invited to. It's a... The party is also a little kinky. It reminds me, on the skin, not in the bottle, but on the skin, a bit of the nobody's watching wrestling scent. Because there... It, it, it's like a leatheriness. Man, too. I and never... And it's like fun and leather, plastic... It, but not plastic. Like vinyl. Like... You know that scent when you go into like a really nice hotel lobby? Mm -hmm. It's the, the furniture in the yeah. hotel lobby. Ooh. Yeah. That probably is the oud. It's mm. funny how sometimes like you need someone to say exactly the right word. And I know that with the scent descriptions, Beth is trying to provide like as, as many of the exact words. But to then explain. like you know, someone just kind of pairs it down to like, yeah, oh, this yeah. smells like, yeah, red, well, when, red pleather. Or... When we're selling the scents at conventions and stuff, so much of what actually ends up selling somebody on a scent is just like one word that they say to you and then you give them a scent and it connects with the word or like a word that you say about something they're smelling and they're like, great, sold, I'll take two bottles. Yeah. A multitude of dreams. 
some might say too many dreams. Uh, a blackened lavender mist, thick with apopanax, licorice root, and benzoin. <laughs> we just did a, quite a few lavender scents for <laughs> the Lilith perfume collection. Uh, this is not like that. It's a dark lavender. It's a dark-sided lavender. It's like a, it's an Edgar Allan Poe kind of lavender smell. You like, you buried it for three days and then dug it up and then, um, uh... Married your 13-year-old cousin. You what? Know? Didn't he do that? Oh, Poe. Okay, you were going in a whole different place. <laughs> I was. <laughs> yeah, sure, but like, that's not what the scent is about. He's weird. Yeah. <laughs> weird guy. If you are afraid of the licorice in the scent... Don't be. I, I am a fan of generally, but what I can say is I am getting just like a faint tang of it on the sort of like end of the inhale. I'm happy that there is any sort of root smell in it to kind of bring it to ground because it kind of hits between the the lavender and the benzoin. It's like very airborne, mm -hmm. and then it settles down because of the uh, like the the earthy side of the notes. One day, everyone's gonna look back at these videos and be like, how much of your life did you just send, spend sitting around and smelling your hand and talking about it? But, I a mean, lot. That, uh, that was, it was our life together. It was our, and it was our job. It was our job. Just and I job. have some of, I have to say, and this is not even like a boast, some of the best smelling hands in the business because of all of this. So if anyone was going to do this, it's us. All is silent, save the voice of the clock. Pink peppercorn, jasmine sandback, and cypress bubbling up through half-subdued white lavender, stabbed through, stabbed with streams of red musk and black currant. I was mad. The language it is violent. Uh, the em emphasis. It's like redundant thank you after a while to say that these scents are dark i mean not all of the halloweeny scents are dark some of them are very sweet and full of like childhood memories and candy and so forth but a lot of them are just like plunging you into the darkest pit imaginable and then having you just smell your way out it is edgar Allan poe i know it i know seems, it was very fitting what you just said <laughs> the cypress isn't i can smell the cypress in the bottle the peppercorn isn't there but that usually kind of like hits pops out yeah I'm not getting, it's not an overwhelming jasmine if that's what you're worried about, or if that's what you're hoping for. No, it's not. I do not feel that I was stabbed by smelling it. Oh, I smell the pepper. In the bottle, I'm getting the red musk, guy. basically. Yes. Um, with the lavender kind of hanging out in the background. Yes. Like whatever lavender we had left over after the last scent is in this one. I can tell that in the dry down is when you get like the play of like the fruits and some of the lighter notes. I think it's fascinating how sometimes it's like those lighter notes that hit you first right out of the gate and then those like dry off and you're left with the darker or heavier sort of substrate, you know, in the dry down. This is the opposite for me. Um, all of the heavier, darker stuff is burning off and then what's left underneath is just the party and the dreams writhing to and fro. Aww. It's uh, magical. It's like eating a, one of those candies that starts off very sour and then it turns sweet. Yes. You're like, oh, thank God that's over. Yeah. Except for us, I like it the other way around generally scent-wise where like the sweet stuff wears away and then there's like this clump of sour fizz in the center. Glare and glitter and piquancy and phantasm. Gazunte. <laughs> Oris absolute and leather contorted by cherry and orange blossom. Um, I am a big sucker for an orange blossom scent. I know that I'm not alone there. I get a lot of requests for that at conventions and so forth. I'm getting the cherry more than the orange, like right off the nose in the bottle. Same. Um, and not as much of the leather. I bet it's hanging out in there. I... Yep. It is like orange and cherry blossom sitting on a leather sofa. Like... It's like that poly couple at the party that starts making out, hoping that you'll be like watching or join in or whatever. And the question is like, will you? Or will you just kind of get up and go get a drink or maybe just decide that you have to go? I'm into it. I'm like open-minded. 
here's one of the first ones that I smelled when these were being poured, and I have to admit it was one of the ones I was most curious about, just from reading the descriptions, and then also ended up easily being among my favorite of the whole collection. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just that easy. This is Happy and Dauntless and Sagacious, which several people had specifically asked us to, uh, to smell and talk about, because the description Imprisoned in frenzied joy, ribbons of raspberry and red currant streaming through thick goat's milk. And I can smell it from here. Yeah, there's something about the word goat in a perfume description, and obviously more on this later. But oh, where you goat. you don't you dive in and you don't know where you're going. You're like, how how deep is this goat? Where am I goading? And in the bottle, like the I mean it's it's the fruit is right there on top, but there is like an immediate depth in a way that's like earthy and creamy and is very much like the goat's milk. And I found that to be really fascinating because that is not something that it ever had occurred to me to smell like per se. And then I was like, okay, let's try some on because how goaty can I really handle smelling? And the answer it's, like, it's pretty goaty. It's goaty. And not in a bad way. No, the, the there goat is... The milk, like, really brings out the raspberry and the red currant. It's, like, intoxicating. It just it smells is, like... It is. It is like a... It's like a custard. It's like a nice... Yes. Like Creamy, a tart, tart custard. Yeah. Oh, my God. With just, like, the fairest hint of the barnyard to, like, remind you of, like, where all this came from, you know? But that's like a really common in fragrance to evoke the erotic by going in like an animalic direction with a scent, which definitely takes it out of the realm of like beautiful sweet fruits, just, you know, as like a sweet light fragrance. This is like a much earthier woman. She knows some tricks. You know what I'm saying? But illimitable dominion over all. Uh, this is the last line in the story. So you know it's not ending on a particularly... I'm getting in here. I know, right? Can you smell it? <laughs> no. Uh, yes. Yeah. I have to admit, when I first smelled it, I was like, this is more astringent than I wanted it to be. I was looking for like a deeper experience. But then I have to say, yesterday, I tried this on actually and spent some time with it. And within a few minutes, Whatever I was smelling that hit in that astringent way, uh, which may have been, I think, something in the cypress or the birch or the way they're playing together. But within a few minutes, I just, I actually got distracted and was doing something else and then I was like, what is that incredible smell coming from my own arm? And then it is like the birch and the cypress that I really wanted, which I think is really fascinating how it mixes with Tenebris Kate's artwork because it's the columns in the palace, but they weirdly look like trees. It kind of, the illustration of the giant skeleton looks like it could be in a forest. Mm -hmm. And that's definitely where the fragrance goes. We are lost in the woods as a civilization, you know, and this is the perfume that, that reflects that. It was folly to grieve. Yeah. or to think uh, this is another oft requested one that people really wanted to know oh yes because the crushed diamonds someone specifically asked what do the crushed diamonds smell like well you know um, we crushed a lot of diamonds to make this perfume so it's a real steal at $26 or whatever it is on the site uh, ginger squeezed champagne with crushed diamonds orange blossoms and peach blossoms this is one of my favorites from the collection um, you love a champagne I love a champagne. Uh, like Bon like, Vivant is one of your favorites. Yes, and I like the ginger. Um, and I, I like the peach. You keep mentioning that you smell the ginger right off the bat. Like, I don't really smell, I smell it. it. Uh, I smell the champagne. I smell, and because I'm, I'm more adjusted to the orange blossom, the peach blossom hits me right on the nose. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's a really great, like, fizzy, like, fruity scent. Uh, and then let's click. Okay, so we're, I'm gonna have to actually to get to the diamonds. I'm gonna go in there. There is uh, the champagne, which has like a kind of a sparkle on the nose, and I don't know what we use to get the champagne note, but it's like that consistent experience throughout mm -hmm. all of our perfumes that have that. Um, 
the crushed diamonds is more of like a mineral sparkle if that makes any sense like the champagne is like a fruity sparkle and then the the sh i from what i can tell from what i'm getting on the skin the crushed diamonds has like it is like a it's the mineral equivalent of that note mm -hmm. it's witchcraft Rudely sparkling yeah. yeah there is something in there that's like a nice. yeah and again even on the skin i don't get the ginger as much I still smell the ginger. That's I'm that makes me really happy. It I smells, want to like smell the it. ginger and the peach to me with like the peach blossom are like blending together very strongly. And it smells to me like ginger peach champagne. It smells like a really fun cocktail. It really does. This is like the good the the early part of the party, the masquerade yeah. where everything is still fine and everyone's happy and rich and entitled and probably insufferable, but goddamn they smell good. Their rose tufted wig powder and with their rose tufted wig powder and their rest. stupid faces uh the night is waning away the night is waning away the night is waning away i need coffee yeah please i might have to plunge my like whole arm in there up to the elbow uh, night blooming jasmine uh and sirius reflected through ruddy musk and crimson amber oh, i can smell coffee that's funny i'm like oh it smells like coffee I'm still mostly getting jasmine. Oh, I got way more of it than I wanted ah. to. It's all over my finger. Okay, walk me through it. I'll smell it while you talk. I don't... What is serious? Oh, interesting. Is it like a cat? It's a cactus flower. Serious is a cactus flower, I learned today. I can't pick it apart. It's just a very beautifully blended perfume where the individual notes, aside from the jasmine, which is kind of there, kind of holding court, yeah. like the dark clock in the center of the room, and then the others are kind of just dancing around it, and good luck telling them apart. It's just fucking beautiful. And of course my brain is doing that thing where now that I saw that Sirius is a cactus flower and then I'm smelling it, I'm like, well of course that smells like a cactus flower because I have too much imagination. The red death. This death is red. This death is red, y'all. Uh, splatters of red musk, bruised purple violets, vetiver, and pimento. Beth wrote me to wrote to me about this one when she was blending it because she was shocked at how um, frightening she thought it was. I think it's the pimento, um, which definitely gives it an edge into. Oh yeah, there's like a shock. Yeah, there's a there's a an area where it lands crossways on your nose in a way that you're not expecting. Uh, which for a perfume inspired by a civilization ending plague, I think is par for the course. So if you are a red musk fan, and I don't know what the red is in it, could it be dragon's blood? Uh, totally. It could be, I can't tell. The violet is not clobbering me. The vetiver is there just muttering in the background. And the pimento kind of just like thwacks you at yeah. the end of your yeah. inhale, you know? It's really nice. Um, I haven't tried this one on, so we'll just do a little... I think I might have just put it on directly over the uh, last one. It, smells like it is sweeter. Champagne. It is sweeter on the skin than it is on the bottle. Uh, which I actually kind of appreciate, especially because you don't lose the pimento or twang. So. The Scarlet Horror is, uh, it says Blasphemous Mockery, Blood Musk, and Vetiver. I wore, I sold some of this at Lunacy the other night. Someone was looking for Matahari, we were out of stock, and she ended up buying this, I believe. I am so covered in fucking perfume right now, I can't even smell this. Yeah, I... Especially because we just, we just it's smelled a, really, it smells a uh, like the whole party in here. Also, we just smelled red musk in the one before this, so I'm having a hard time. Uh, I smell champagne. I smell jasmine. I smell lavender. And vetiver in the last one also. I'm like, okay. So for those who really want to know what the Scarlet Horror smells like, we should have done it in the other order because I smell the vetiver. The the musk and vetiver from the last one is still. It's uh. It is a scarlet horror. You've got like, it's like the sweet, the sweetness and the, the musk. animalic musk factor. And then the vetiver, which just kind of plunges it off a cliff mm -hmm. into like a really nice smoky area. Um, I think that's all we have to say about that. 
the sounding of midnight upon the clock. That is a sound that we are we don't hear very often these days. <laughs> Terror, horror, and disgust. A bowel churning. That was the other point where I screamed when I was reading this uh, before the perfumes came out. A bowel churning, sweet clench of myrrh and green musk in a pool of suffocating black moss and a shock of white cognac. <gasps> what? What? A sentence. Okay, so in the bottle, um, I'm not getting the moss right off the bat. There's the, again, with the animalic, like the green musk, really great. Uh, it's not surprising to me that in a collection like this that she went into a really chromatic sort of interpretation of the scent notes because the story is all about the different colored rooms. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot to play with creatively in terms of bringing those colors into a perfume. Oh, suffocating is right. And I don't mean to scare you off with that, but like in terms of just like the darkness kind of like sealing off all of the light. So there's like this initial kind of rush of like a light. I think it's because of the myrrh mm -hmm. and the musk that is kind of like light and drifting. And then suddenly it just gets like swept aside by all of the darker notes. I think the moss is going to be like the last thing to kind of come out after everything else wears off. There's a sharpness of it, which is definitely that the shock of white cognac. But that's like this kind of like dark hovering green black pool of terror. That's it. That's what that smell is. The tastes of the Duke were peculiar. The swirl of a thousand glittering vices, absinthe and laudanum, opium poppy and neroli, star anise and black currant, whip leather and iron shackles, gilded vanilla flower and king mandarin. Someone specifically wrote and asked about the vanilla and how strong it was. Mm. My first thought was that when you're smelling this in the bottle, there is, amidst everything else, like a bit of a creamsicle smell. It's like the, the vanilla the and vanilla the mandarin. And the mandarin sit side by side very nicely. So it is evident in, yeah. the, in the bottle and on the skin. If you hate vanilla, you're not gonna be able to do it. But it's not like the main part of the experience. It, the, I would say though that the Mandarin is, is really dominant in this blend, at least initially, because I'm not really getting the leather or iron, it's going a bit, there's like a metallic hint mm -hmm. now that it's on the skin. But it's it's one of those, It's the swirl is a good description because it's not one of those where like the notes are dominant and side by side they are like smeared across the canvas in a way that is really beautiful. Yeah, and you're just gonna keep finding them. Yes. You're like, yes. oh wait. Yeah, it's some of just, my favorite blends just kind of... that we do are like that. Yeah, that's why when someone comes to you at an event and is like, "What do you have that's like Matahari?" and then you read the notes, and I'm like, "Well, there we don't have anything like this. We have that." Yeah, you can get two or three of these notes in another perfume, but they will be in a completely it's different be mixture. Completely, yeah, <laughs> it's really beautiful. Uh, I actually, uh, of all of the fruitier ones that are in this collection, this along with the goat milk one, I think are the two that have the most staying power for me. And then last, last for now, there was beauty, there was wine. What? Gushes of black and red wine, splattering uh, damask rose and white pear and engulfed in thick clove and scent. I'm sensitive to wine scents, so that was all I could smell. Oh bubble. really? Yeah. I want the clove. I can smell the wine for sure. I, I can smell the rose. I can smell the rose and the pear and the, the clove. The pear, I was able to pick out in that and I, did, I really like that. But yeah, it's like I don't know how much wine will come off on the skin. Why don't you like... try it? Because I can't try it on. I'm... Weird. What does it smell like? Wine. This is like, it reminds me on the of Lady Macbeth, which is one of our wine-heavy scents. I'm getting less of the pear in you, on you than I am in the bottle. I don't even know if people can hear me when I'm talking here. 
the rose is actually really lovely uh, in that. Uh, I want to smell the clove, and maybe in time you will have it. Give it a few minutes. So what's crazy is it's, uh, it looks like we had all of these but one, and there will be more because I know in the Black Phoenix Trading Post update of hair glosses and atmosphere spray. atmosphere sprays, there will be a, a red death component and I have read that update too, and I cannot unsee some of those words. I'm very excited about it. So I don't know yet for sure what we're bringing to Oddities Flea Market Los Angeles on Saturday. We're definitely bringing something, right? We'll have lots of perfumes. I just oh. don't know if we'll have these perfumes, but we will have these perfumes at New York Comic Con, which is October 4th through 7th, where we will be with the nobodies doing the perfumes so definitely come and smell them in person there, and then you can tell us why we're wrong about everything that we just said. I can take it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm wrong all the time. I'm kind of like wrong for a living. I'm not even wearing the right thing right now. I'm completely wrong. <laughs> Galen studiously does not disagree. That is literally all the time we have for this week. Uh, that was a lot. It was a lot. I hope you got something out of it. Um, we're gonna go have a Silkwood shower. <laughs> it's been Sunday service. I am Tom of the lab. This I is uh, Galen. Of the lab? Of the lab. Yeah. Of lab. Of lab. <laughs> and we hope you have a very wonderful Sunday. We hope you have a very wonderful and smelly Sunday. Did I just hit you? Yeah.